Uh, how has my perspective changed as I've, uh, shall we say, matured <laughs> over the years? Uh, I've been singing professionally since I'm 12 years old, which is a really long time. And I would have to say that uh, over the years, I've grown to understand how crucial and important it is to prepare the next generation, um, not only for appreciating jazz music, which is America's heritage, really. It's America's folk music, uh, our, our great contribution to world culture, but also um, teaching children to appreciate beauty in general, I think, is a necessary uh, thing that has to be uh, cultivated. Um, I think that you need to, to show children what, what beauty is, how to appreciate it, how to listen, how to look, uh, how to be quiet sometimes and not speak, uh, and just soak something in. Um, I've been doing a lot more teaching lately, a lot more teaching, and I, I've really been enjoying it. And I think when you're younger, you don't realize just how much you learn from students. And now I certainly appreciate it. I mean, as you grow older, you do gain wisdom. That's maybe the only good thing, possibly. But, uh, I've been, I've been uh, teaching a lot more and enjoying it a lot more. Well, there are a lot of life lessons to be learned from singing in an ensemble. Um, this is, this is for sure. Um, it's almost, it's like a microcosm of a society. It's it's a tiny society, and you have to learn to live with other people's differences, and compromise, and assert yourself when it's necessary, and learn to step back when it's necessary. You learn all kinds of social dances, and. Um, the joys of collaboration, as well as um, the pains of collaboration. But I, th I think it's, in, I mean, to raise your voice in harmony with other people is one of the greatest thrills, I think, on the planet. At least it has been for me. I mean, and it's a very primal thing. I mean, um, so many cultures uh, that have been on this earth for hundreds of years have been doing that to celebrate uh, life events, birth, death, you know, uh, coming of age, they raise their voices together in song. It's just a joyous thing to be able to do it, but you have to have a certain set of personality skills, I, I think, uh, to be in a group um, and to, to be true collaborators and to realize that what you can create together could conceivably be greater than what you could achieve alone. I mean, that, that's when it works beautifully, is when uh, everyone contributes what they do best, and each person sort of makes up for the other person's shortcomings, and together you, you, you put your best efforts forward and you come out with something that's extraordinary. Well, to be perfectly honest, I have never felt burnt out with music. I felt burnt out with the music business. I felt burnt out with traveling. Um, I felt burnt out with managing conflicts as opposed to creating, but with music, never. Um, and I just, I just find constant inspiration. It's everywhere. If you just uh, are open to it and know where to look, or and um, I, I, I usually have two or three things going on at once, you know. As much as I, I love harmony singing and the group, which is really my baby, uh, along with uh, Alan and Cheryl, and Tim certainly, you know, it was it was he he was the founder of our group. Um, I also loved collaborating with other people, and I find fresh inspiration there. I just go where my ears lead me, and and uh, where my passion leads me. I don't think you can go wrong with that. Our first performance was in a bar uh, called Dr. Generosities. 
and it was thrilling because we had rehearsed like six songs for six months. Maybe it was even five songs for six months. We just were, every, we, we, it was Java Jive, Operator, I think. Uh, what else? Maybe Tuxedo Junction, two others. You can depend on me, perhaps. And it was, Blue Champagne definitely was one of them. And um, I mean, I, had, I was singing in a three-part harmony group for many, many years. But when I heard that four-part harmony, I went out of my mind and said, oh, this is what I want to do. Definitely want to do this. Um, and I'm in the middle, too. See, I, I'm inside it, which is a great place, my happy place. Um, so to get on stage, and we were, we were dressed like maniacs for that first show. I mean, very surreal. Uh, Tim's sister, uh, who was uh, one of the original coquettes, uh, was dressing us. And <laughs> we, I forget what we wore for the very first show, but it was along the lines of a diaper or a howdy duty mask. And Laurel had a necklace of dominoes, and she had feathers on her eyelids. And, Alan was really the one that looked the most like we eventually ended up looking. But uh, I, I do remember wearing a diaper on stage once. I do. <laughs> and, um, and high heels, of course. But, so we got on stage looking like total freaks, but we sang this tight four-part harmony, and people went crazy. And we thought, oh, God, we really have something here. It just encouraged us to keep going. And it, we were actually sitting in on somebody else's set. Well, we knew some musicians, some instrumentalists. Um, a lot of them were playing on Broadway, you know, like in the pits, uh, pits and stuff like that. And uh, they said that they were doing a regular gig at this bar. And they said, well, come, you know, we'll accompany you, and you can do five or six tunes during our set. And that, that was our first gig. Well, and I've said this before about Tim, my, I mean, he was one of those people that changed your life. Um, he was the founder of the Manhattan Transfer. Uh, so many of the original ideas came from him. Um, he was spot on with his A&R suggestions. Operator was his idea. Tuxedo Junction was his idea. Um, he, he produced some of our greatest records. Uh, I just remember, I mean, the thing that I remember the most just is his enthusiasm uh, and, and his generosity, creative generosity and excitement about this music. He wanted everybody to love this vocal jazz. He wanted everybody to love this music the way he did. And, and he was a collector. Also, I mean, a, a really serious record collector and music lover, and and many many different genres. We we he and I shared a love of, of bluegrass music and uh, folk music and uh, things outside of the Manhattan transfer realm, you know. And I just I miss him terribly because uh, we we hung out a lot. We played tennis. We we explored the world a lot together, and uh, he'll be missed now and forever. All right, well, this is for people that love vocal harmony. And um, <laughs> it's, it's one of the most joyous things you can do, really, as a participant, to raise your voice with other people. I mean, whether it's in church or temple or uh, on the subway or, <laughs> or professionally or just you know, teaching your children to love music, um, what to listen for. Um, uh, it's, I, I know this word is overused used, uh, these days, but I feel blessed uh, and grateful for uh, being able to make a living do, singing this, this music for all these years and, and being able to create and having people out there who are appreciating it and listening to it. How many people have that in the world? I don't know. It's just music is a joyous language and a universal language.
and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud to be part of the vocal jazz community.